first guest, one of the best linebackers in all of NFL history. It is uh, an honor to have a five-time All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler, the 2013 Defensive Player of the Year, Carolina Panthers legend, NFL legend, and radio analyst Luke Keekley. Great to see you. Absolutely. Good to be back on. Luke, I have not seen you in a very long time. It's been three years since your retirement, which boggles my mind. It's like the craziest thing ever. Uh, what has the best linebacker in Panthers history been up to lately? I'll tell you what, the uh, the thing that we get into hard right now is, is youth football. So I coach with Greg Olson. We've coached the last two years. We coach his son, Tate, is our quarterback. We coach with his dad, and it's just been, it's been a ton of fun. The amount of time that we spend on youth football, it's a convenient excuse for us to go to lunches and spend two hours drawing plays <laughs> for 12-year-old kids. So that uh, that dominates a lot of my time um, during football season. I bet it gets very competitive, and somehow Greg Olson has time for that while he's studying and ripping these he's pieces amazing. apart in film, crushing it in the booth. Now, I have it on good authority that you were the caddy for Greg Olson, not once, not twice, but but many times as you guys are friends. Did you see this footage yesterday of your other old teammate, Christian McCaffrey, getting set to play in a Super Bowl? <laughs> Did you see this with him and his boy, Kyle? Hey, he's just practicing his golf swing. It's it's funny. If I looked like Christian, I'd probably be outside with my shirt off all the time, too. Is this just like dudes being dudes? I what am I supposed to know from this? This was viral, and I can't quite tell why. And how's his swing? I think it's pretty good that he, he looks like he's just very happy still riding the high from that... Uh, that NFC Championship game, the weather looks beautiful. He's on a freshly, freshly put sod middle of that the middle of that field. There is that fresh sod, so I'm sure it feels great. What is great Kyle Yuzhchek like doing? Check. I don't know what he's doing. He's just he's he's looking strong. He can. They just won the NFC Championship game. They can stand however they want. You watch the game. I'm sure you've tracked Christian's season, <laughs> his career. You were teammates with him for three years. How happy are you to for his success and to see him play in a Super Bowl? Absolutely. You just you, you see how hard these guys work. And Christian's one of the guys that he loves the game of football. And I think it really highlights what he's able to do on the field. Obviously, he can run, he can catch, he's physical, he can run between the tackles. But I think what separates him and really highlights his skill set is how much he loves the game of football. It's super important to him. He loves the guys in the team. And when you kind of combine a guy that loves it, that has skills, and somebody that wants to play and he's a great teammate, then you have a special player. And Christian has shown that this year. He's shown it his whole career. And I'm just happy for guys like mm -hmm. this. I know how hard these guys work. And for him to have the opportunity and get the notoriety that he's getting, is it, it just makes all of us so happy. Why, he, he can run. He can catch. Why is he so hard to get down? Is it just strength or he just knows how to run? Every every run he breaks up, I'm just like, why, what, what is so hard? What is so hard about getting him down? Why, get him down. He's he's physical and he's powerful. And I think you look at his his lower body, there is so much power and explosiveness. And the good backs know how not to hit, get hit square. So he can speed you up, he can slow you down, and he can get on guys' edges where they're not powerful. And he puts his foot in the ground, he gets behind his pads, and when he can get on edges of guys, he's got his full force going forward. And then he's running through shoulders, he's stiff arming guys, and his ability to hmm. control pad level, it's what makes him hard. And you know, you play those guys in training camp, and we don't hit those guys a whole lot, just maybe a little bit during training camp. When you meet a guy like that in the hole, they feel heavy. I don't know what Christian weighs, huh. but he's one of the heavier guys that you hit because they, they just know how to run the football, and he's he's really daggone good. Who got the better of who in three years of practice? Christian. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's, not even, it's not close. Well, There's videos like the out there. He's the best linebacker. He's the best running back. I thought maybe it'd be even Steven, no? No, there's, there's a video out there of Christian's rookie year. We did a one-on-one -on -one drill. And I'd been I'd been in the league probably five years and I was feeling good about myself. And he ran a simple little little option route out of the backfield and he beat me on the option route. They threw in the ball, he caught it. I sprinted after him. He <laughs> juked me inside, ran up, I turned and chased him, he cut back outside again. Another juke. He made he made me miss probably three or four times in one play. And of course the Panthers put it out on social media and they're like, look at our star first round draft pick and I was like golly I look terrible in that video so he's been he's been doing it wow. a long time well it's a tough task for Steve Wilkes your former of course defensive coordinator <laughs> in Carolina he's got a couple studs at linebacker Fred Warner Dre Greenlaw yeah. they both play with a, a Keekly-esque intensity I would say what do they bring to the field that sort of separates them from the other linebackers in the NFL 
Well, you know, you look at you look at Dre, so I'll start with him. He reminds me a lot of Thomas. When I played with Thomas, there's <laughs> there's energy, there's competitiveness, and then just a physical attitude. And that and that wow. defense, obviously I played in it in Carolina and Wilkes was our defensive coordinator and um he was a DB coach before that. So I've spent a lot of time around him. And he allows those guys to do what they do best. Let them run. Let them be rangy. Let them be physical. Let Dre go at the go at the line of scrimmage. Go at the quarterback, and it allows him to highlight just his attitude, his intensity, his competitiveness. And then you look at Fred, and he's just he's big, he's long, he's smooth. His ability to read and react, and then he's always around the football. And I think that's something that that defense allows you to do. He's got big horses in front of him. Him and Dre have just the freedom to kind of roam. And that's what Wilkes does such a good job of. He said, Hey, look, this is the confines of our defense. This is what we want to get accomplished, but I trust you guys. I trust your skill set and go play football. So it's a little bit of a give and take Mm. between Fred and Dre and then coach Wilkes as well. Wow. A a TD comparison. I'm sure he's going to love that when this hits the Twitter, the the Twitter machine from Luke Keekley. Okay. So you're the perfect person to ask when I, when I see you and I hear you, I think about (laughs) all those mic'd up segments where you were calling the plays before they happen and you're telling the team, this is what's about to happen. So I need you to help me here because you're the perfect person to solve the Travis Kelsey riddle. You only faced him once in your career. We looked, but in that game, you only had three grabs for 31 yards. So let's, let's dig into this. What are his tells? Like before a play even gets off, what, 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 what can you tell me? Size up and scout Travis Kelsey ahead of Super Bowl 58. Well, I think the thing with Travis, you know, you, you, you try to study as much as you can. You try to anticipate routes. He doesn't run. He runs normal routes. He runs fades like he just ran that, that touchdown, that back shoulder ball he caught against Baltimore. But nothing he does is truly on script. So he can come up. He can find a window. He can move out of a window. He has the freedom to kind of find space and sit down. And what we always talk about with guys like that is, is you have to keep your eyes on Travis. You can't take your eyes off of, off of him and put him on Mahomes. If he comes out of a break, you think it's a typical out route. You put your eyes back to the quarterback, then you lose sight of Kelsey. And once you lose sight of him, Mahomes knows that. Kelsey knows that. Now he's going to pivot and get open. So when you play guys like that that are so have such a good ability to kind of just go off the cuff. You got to have your eyes on them. You got to pin hips. You got to stay attached. And then when the ball is in the air, the one tell that guys like him have is his his eyes. His eyes are always going to tell you when he's tracking the ball. The good guys, you can't read hands because they're going to wait to the last second, throw your hands up. But with Kelsey, if you can stay attached, you can keep your eyes on him. You can read his eyes. When his eyes begin to focus is when you can play through his hands. And it sounds super easy, but there's a reason that he's Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine myself in those in that situation, and I would be so terrified to even look at Travis Kelsey in that moment that it's just so intense. I just can't wait for the Super Bowl. There's an excellent breakdown on how to defend uh, the future All-Pro, future Hall of Famer, potent, I mean, greatest tight end ever. That's the kind of conversation we're having about this generational talent. Now, uh, you know, you're a defensive player. We like to talk a little defense. On, I think the better defense is going to win this, this thing, I, and it might be the Chiefs. It might be Spags and those boys versus Wilkes, what he's got going on with that pass. Pass rush. Defensive players have only been, ever been named Super Bowl MVP nine times. Von Miller, the last defensive player. We don't need MVP. to bring that one up, Kay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm still a little, Super Bowl a little 50. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. You did play in that one, which had to be yeah. an insane experience. Uh, do you think, or who do you think in the Chiefs Niners matchup out of defensive players has the best chance to be Super Bowl MVP? Who's the game changing impact player as we look at the odds here? I think you look at pass rushers. So I'm going to start with the Chiefs. I think, you know, you put it up there. That was the name I was going to say is Chris Jones. That guy can, he can destroy a game. In the run game, in the pass game, he's so disruptive. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go, if you're going to go on the Niners, the same thing. If you're going to think, hey, it's going to be a throw game. They're going to get back. They're going to drop back. I'd imagine there's going to be a little bit of run. But I'm going to say Nick Bosa. I think pass rushers and interior pass rushers specifically like Chris Jones, are so disruptive. They cause such a problem. I'm going to go Chris Jones and, and Bosa, the two that you guys have up there. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm told in my ear, it's a great choice by you. I didn't quite hear it because I, um, my amazing control room dug up the footage of you and McKay- you getting Duke. Not only am I going to bring up Super Bowl 50, Keekly, today, and this like <laughs> nice debut one up in Adams, we're also going to show you that footage for you to take us through it one more time. Yeah, take a look at it. I, look, I think I look cool. I got the tin advisor, so there's one. <laughs> there's two. There's probably another one coming. So one right there, two. Yeah, that's pretty good. Three, so. And he's gotten, he gotten better. 
he's just good. He's, yeah. And he's gotten better. He's bigger. It just he's he's just good, man. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> and he might be Super Bowl MVP. I would take that on the offense side of the ball all day. Really, out of on both. We're talking Mahomes. We're talking Travis Kelsey, Ayuk, Debo, Christian. Christian had two touchdowns last week, and he was a yard away from three. So, and he's he's one of my buddies, and I just <laughs> I, I I know how hard he works, and how much it matters to him, and what kind of teammate he is, and how important football is, and I just root for guys that that it matters to, and are good people, and Christian fits that mold. I remember interviewing him after they lost the NFC Championship uh, at the Super Bowl week, and he was by far he stuck out as the most heartbroken. Yeah, it just matters. Dejected and that's huge. player, and now for him to be playing in the big game is just amazing. Uh, I saw the Panthers' unis and the cool visor. Let's just go with it. This squad's making moves. Uh, the former Panthers linebacker Dan Morgan, named GM. We've got a new head coach in town. What makes these hires, in your opinion, a step in the right direction? If you think so. Well, I think you look at Dan, and the one thing he was as a player was he was physical, he was intense, he was competitive, and he played in Carolina. And he knows what the, the 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 blood of Carolina is. You know, he played for Sam Mills, and Sam Mills is keep pounding. That's that's the epitome of what the Carolina Panthers are. And so Dan took that as a player, and then he went to Seattle and then Buffalo, and now he's back. You know, he was here the past couple of years. He knows what it takes, and he's had success in other places too. So I think his ability to kind of, hey, I played here as a player with Sam. I know what this team is about. I know what this city's about. I went to Seattle. I, ton of, I saw a ton of success there. I saw success in Buffalo. Now I'm back in Carolina. And you kind of look at all those teams. We played against Seattle a lot when I was playing. And the one thing that they were was physical. Hmm. They were physical in the run game. They were physical on the defensive side of the ball. You know, Cam Chancellor, Marshawn Lynch were the two guys, and Bobby Wagner that stuck out as, like, physical downhill thumpers attitude. And then you go to you go to – to Buffalo, the same thing with me, Mc, McDermott up there. He's a physical, defensive-minded yeah. guy. I just, I like what he, I like what he believes in. I like what he stands for. And then now there's unity with, with him and Dave Canales. You know, they were spent time in Seattle together as those both those guys came up together. I just think that there's a common, there's a common goal. There's a common um, outlook on our football team, and I think that is just so positive. I mean, we have to get Bryce Young back on track. So the positive is what, of course, Dave was able to do with Russell, with Gino, and sort of Baker, and sort of having to get that out of him. What, if you got to be GM, or got to be in that room making those decisions, what is the one thing that you would adjust, change, bring in to help get the best and the most out of Bryce? But I think like they've Mike done Evans it already with, with the coaching staff. You bring okay. guys in. Obviously, Idzik was with Canales mm -hmm. down in, in, in Tampa. They've got three or four other guys. I think Harold Goodwin's there. Um, Joe Gilbert was the offensive line coach last year in Tampa. So there's a common there's a common goal. They understand the offense. They get each other. So there's not going to be time where they have to spend getting to know each other and getting to know to the offense. I think that's a huge advantage. And then Bryce is just going to have an opportunity this offseason to just take a step back and relax. Like, hey, this is what I did well. I get to go on vacation. I get to get away from football and then come in and really have like a true second off season where he can just kind of sit back and go through OTAs and really work on stuff. And, um, you know, last year was was tough. We were banged up everywhere. There was a lot going on. We had some different guys calling plays. But I think for him to have the opportunity to take a step back, this is what I did well. This is what I didn't do well. Get in there with, with Canales. They're going to have a very common feel for what they want to get on the mm. offensive side of the ball. Um, I'm excited about it. And the one thing I'll say about Bryce is, you know, the numbers probably weren't what people wanted to, wanted it to be, but his toughness that he showed last year is, is awesome. He mm. got hit a ton. He got sacked a ton. We really struggled um, on the offensive side of the ball. I don't think it was anything that we thought it was going to be. But there's a bright future in front of him, and I think it starts with toughness. And I talked about that with Dan, with what he stands for. Bryce is obviously a really good player. We saw it in moments last year. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the team. But the toughness that he brought to that position and to our team and getting up and not complaining and playing the season, obviously he missed the game in Seattle with an ankle, but he got hit a lot. That was early in the season. And for him to get yeah. up, not complain, always walk off the field – it just tells me a lot about the guy, what, what he believes in his heart, and I'm excited. I think we've got some 
some good stuff going yeah. in Carolina. Maybe go trade for like a Mike Evans or something too while we're at it. Yeah, that'd just, be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> I know the coach, you're excited, but maybe a, maybe a weapon or two. Uh, you're speaking yeah. about about Bryce, uh, and it and I like that a defensive legend is being so nice about a quarterback, um, of course, on a team that you're still saying our team with the Panthers. Uh, before we let you go, I got to get obviously your pick for the Super Bowl, but Brock Purdy gets a lot of criticism. It's the system, it's Kyle, it's Debo, it's Ayuk, it's anything but Brock Purdy. What do you make of that criticism? Criticism and maybe share something that he does that he doesn't get enough credit for. He wins games. That's all he does. He comes back and, it, you know, you can find knocks on him. He can't come back and win a game. We did that twice this, this postseason. And you look at his numbers, and if you took his name out of there and you just showed a, showed numbers from the last two years, I think it'd be a completely hmm. different conversation. But when I look at a guy like him, if you're studying Brett or uh, Brock, you're like, all right, what does he do well? I think he's quick with the football. I think he knows where he's going. He showed the ability to scramble. But then at the end of the day, I think if you're writing a scouting report on Brock Purdy, it says winner. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. And I think people are starting to kind of come around on that a little bit. Obviously, you know, he's got dudes around him. He's got Trent. He's got Christian. He's got Debo. He's got Ayuk. He's got Kittle. Obviously, Kyle is phenomenal as a play caller. That's not his fault that he's in that system and had the success he's had. I think he wins football games and you watch how guys yeah. talk about him in the locker room. They love him and they believe in him. And man, I, I root for guys that do it the right way. Like I kind of talked about, and I'm a big fan of his. Uh, it's really well said. I, the, the part that I think people think, oh, it's easier. It's known like he's such a young player and being quick and knowing where he's going in my eyes as a fan is the most impressive thing when I watch it. Yeah, and there was there was I think it was on the Christian run last week, last week against Green Bay there. You know, Kyle's got a million shifts, a million motions. Yeah. They were in a formation. The clock was coming down. The play clock was coming down. They're supposed to have a motion. And he's the guy started to go in motion. Brock put him back and snapped the football and Christian scored a touchdown. And that seems like a little thing, but that motion they were going to do is probably just a, a back and forth motion to give a different look, get guys moving, but they wouldn't have been able to snap the ball if that motion happened. So either going to call a timeout, get a delay a game, either way that play doesn't happen, but he has enough, he has enough confidence in what the system is, what he's doing. He's got his eye on the play clock. He's able to say, Hey, this motion doesn't matter. Yeah. The, what matters is we have the look we want. I need to snap the ball and get the ball to Christian and ultimately ended up in a touchdown. And those little things, I think, are what makes him special, too. Yeah, it was a long... I know what you're talking about because my producer, Hamilton, sent me that when it happened and we picked it apart nine times. It was his long, uh, long run against Green Bay. I mean, veteran quarterbacks don't have that, and he has that, and now he's in a Super Bowl. Give me your one-sentence pick on this game, and we will say goodbye, Luke. I, I'm rooting for Steve Wilkes and that defense to play really well, and then and then Christian and Brock and that offense and Kyle Shanahan to go out there and get their first Super Bowl. So I'm a big, obviously, Christian fan. I'm going to root for root for the Niners. I'm excited to see it. Amazing. Luke Keekley, we appreciate you. You are an absolute legend. We'll talk to you, of course, and congrats on everything that you're doing uh, off the field. We love having you as part of the FanDuel family. Thank you very much. All right.